2, I, um, I want to start a series today called God's Big Idea. Um, I really have had this on my heart for about a month and a half uh, of, of really wanting to take and put a shovel down here for a bit, okay? So over the next few weeks, I don't know, we'll see how long it goes, but over the next few weeks at least, I, I want us to put some shovels in and start digging a little bit and understand what God's big idea is about. I, I want to know. I, I want to know what his idea is. Because if we know his ideas, we can carry his ideas. Amen. You know, you know the world uh, the world we live in is actually, um, it's, everything's an idea. I mean, the lights are, they come from what? An, an idea. Uh, the chairs you're sitting in, they come from an idea. Right? Everything starts from an idea. So an idea turns into ideologies, and ideologies turn into philosophies, and philosophies begin to turn into ways of living, okay? I mean, it's just like, you know, just like our government, right? Our government, and we're going to talk some about democracy a little bit, but, but, but the deal is, is our government, it's actually, it's an old idea. It it's, it's actually came from Plato. It actually came from Socrates, uh, democracy was something that, so really, honestly, the Greeks are running our government, right? I mean, if, if it's their idea. So it's just like terrorism. You can never, ever really defeat terrorism because it's an ideology. You can only defeat terrorism by changing the ideology of somebody. Am I making sense here? So, so the world is about ideas. The world runs on ideologies, okay? So, so the creative process starts with an idea, and it's, it's ideas, is, ideas is the way we solve problems. And, and unfortunately, it's how we create problems in our world also. It's through an idea. What is an idea? It's a thought or suggestion as to a possible course of action, an aim or purpose, an intention or a view. And I want to start talking today and put a shovel down here and start digging on what is God's big idea. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. The apostle Paul. He writes these words. <clears throat> I'm going to find it here. Colossians chapter 2. Good morning. Sorry I didn't greet you. Good morning. Glad everybody came. Uh, in verse 8. But beware. Beware. Right? Beware. Lest anyone cheat you. Lest. Anyone carry you off as a predator, as, as prey, like a predator would carry off his prey. Beware lest anyone enslave you or take you captive. Beware. The actual Greek tense here is that it, it means to all the time. It, it doesn't mean just a one-time thing. It was a, it's a continuous Greek imperative tense. And it means this, just not to bore you, but just for the nerds in the room. Uh, it means that actually it becomes a habit. It's something that you can never stop doing. He said, beware lest anyone cheat you through what? Philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to the Messiah, the Christ, the King, the anointed King. That's what the word Christos in the Greek, Messiah in the Hebrew, it means uh, the anointed King. He said, beware lest anyone, anyone affect you through a system of thinking that comes from ideas. Ideologies turn into philosophies. And he says, listen, I need you to beware. I need you to watch out that you're not being taken captive by philosophies that are not God's philosophies. God has a philosophy. God has a way of thinking. God has a way of living. Come on now. He said, beware of this. So many times we're being taken captive and being enslaved by philosophies that are not God's philosophies because God's philosophies lead to wrong conclusions and th therefore lead to wrong responses. Amen. He said, beware, beware, beware. You know, listen, let's just think about, let's go back a second. Think about what the temptation in the garden was about. It was a different idea. And an idea became an ideology, which became a philosophy, which became a way of, of living. The temptation in the garden was introduced by ideas. 
The enemy knew if he could introduce a different idea, he could build his own philosophy, which would advance his cause and advance his views, which would only kill, steal, and destroy. See, things, listen, things begin to lose their sensitivity when we fail to keep things at the forefront of our thinking. Okay? Stay with me. I'm just introducing this. We're we're putting a shovel in. We're digging today. Things lose their sensitivity if we fail to keep and to understand the importance of things. Come on now. See, See, you'll stop doing things for God when you stop losing. When you start losing... Uh, the, the point of why you're doing what you're doing, you'll stop doing things for God. You'll start, stop doing things in the kingdom. You'll stop, stop doing things in the church. Why? Because you're losing your focus. Come on now. The enemy's got an idea. He's got an ideology. He's trying to push that ideology. Amen. You guys look at me funny. Why are you serving? Why do you help that neighbor? Why are you helping the less fortunate? Why are you giving that money to that church? Why? The answer to burnout. I'm going to tell you, the answer to burnout is what I'm going to be teaching you over the next weeks is the answer to burnout is right here. The answer to burnout is God's big idea. The answer to losing your zeal is God's big idea. The answer to your why in life is God's big idea. We find our serving, our giving, our doing, our commitment, our patience all locked up in God's big idea. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God, this is the announcement. He said, God, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Rada. That's the Hebrew word rada. And it means rule. It means subdue. It means to manage. It means to govern. So right away, God is introducing us to his big idea. Right away, he's trying to get us to understand, what is God's, what is my idea? My idea is is for you to have dominion. He's introducing us to his idea right from the start. Amen. Listen, God's big idea is his kingdom. Listen, we're getting ready to come up on another election season. Oh, my gosh. We spend millions, we, I'm talking about we, Spend millions of dollars on elections. Why? Why do we do that? Why is it so politically charged? What's, because we all have something in us for good government. Stay with me now. There's something in all of us that wants to be governed. There's something in us that's innate that's in our being, that's in our DNA, that wants good government. Now, everybody has their own ideas of what good government. (laughs) Now you see. Because why? Man was introduced and and was given a government, was given dominion, was given. So listen, we were introduced to God governing the world. He's a king. Kings are different than presidents. You realize that, right? Well, do I want to go here, Lord? (laughs) Democracy is probably the greatest, listen to me, it's the greatest form of man government in the world. But it's man's government. And not God's government. So you're all the time, listen, we put all of our chips in, and, and listen, I believe there should be, you know, I mean, I, I'm, so, I'm so thankful of what's been going on now, in, it seems like in states, with the, with the abortion stuff going on. Praise God for that, amen? And that's God's heart, not to kill babies. Hello? Thankful for that. So I'm not saying there's not, uh, there's a lot of things we could talk about, because really if they wanted to do this a long time ago, they really could have. Brian Scott told me this, was very instrumental in talk, introducing me to this about four years ago. But people have ideas and agendas and people are in each other's pockets. And you know how government is. It, it's where the, you just follow the money, baby. That's where you'll find it. But see, I'm telling you, I, I understand. I'm thankful for the, the United States of America and, and I'm thankful for democracy because it's the best that man has to offer. But there's something in all of us that wants governed and wants a good government. It's in there because God, is, that's, that's his kingdom. So we're all looking for a government. We're all looking for the right government to get up underneath. 
All right. So it's important. We have, where is this desire coming from? It's coming actually from God. It's just tarnished in a lot of ways. Amen. Something that Adam lost in the garden was government, was dominion. Stay with me. It's in man now to believe that government is the answer. <laughs> but it's the wrong government that's the answer. We spend billions of dollars and we support things I, I, it's ama- it amazes me what Christians throw themselves behind and support because someone has a certain letter behind their name. But where's it coming from? It's coming from something in us that wants good government, but we're not finding it in the world's government. We're only going to find it in the kingdom of God. I'm putting the shovel down. We're laying foundation because it's going to set up for what I'm going to talk about in the weeks to come. So it's important, church. I'm, we're just going to Bible school. It's important that we see the overarching theme from Genesis to Revelation. It, the overarching theme is about God's kingdom. Amen. We see it introduced in Exodus chapter 19. I mean, we, we have God looking at Israel and saying, Man, I'm desiring a kingdom of priests. Right? I want to be your king. Remember that whole story, right? I want to be your king, right? And and, and I want you guys to be a kingdom of priests, and I want you to be ruling and reigning with me. But it failed. And we see it in bits, and we see it in bits, shadows and types, and we we see things going on in the Old Testament that, that, that God's trying to move us that way. Trying to move us that way. I tell you what, you just have to follow me. Go to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah chapter 9. You got to follow me on this one, Marianne. Isaiah chapter 9. I want you to go over here real quick. I want you to see this. If you got your Bible or your pixels or paper, however you do it. Isaiah chapter 9. Look here. We're putting, we're going to dig foundation today. Isaiah chapter 9. So, so, so we, we, we see God wanting to get his government back. He, he's wanting to try to introduce back his government. It's, he, 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 he said, Adam, I want you to have dominion. Adam failed, of course. He, uh, sin came, right? Uh, death was injected, and all of a sudden now man began to live for himself and his own philosophies, the way that he thought that things should be ruled, the way that he sh- things, things should be done, right? That was the whole introduction of uh, with, 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 with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was a, an alternative reality, something that God didn't want him to have anyway. He just wanted to know good and know him and then all of a sudden Isaiah picks up in verse 6 for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and what's going to be upon his shoulders and upon his what the government shall be upon his what the government what's he bringing he's bringing a government he's bringing a a kingdom. He's bringing his kingdom to the earth. We quote this at Christmas time, but this is what the this is what Jesus was trying to, or God was trying to do. He said, "I'm going to reintroduce the kingdom again. I'm I'm going to bring in the kingdom, and the government's going to be upon his what shoulders. Shoulders are an important thing because you know what they would do? They would wear a sash. the The king would wear a sash." With the signet of the kingdom on its. You see that when the king put the sash on, it meant all the power of the kingdom. Basically, it's open for business. All the kingdom now is ready to be ruled because the king has. Hey, Tony, where do they, where do they wear their? Where do they wear their ranks? Where's ranks? Our military puts the ranks on the what? See, when Jesus said, I'm coming, I'm the ranking one. I am the king. I'm, I am the king of this kingdom. <laughs> Look what he says. Read on. It says, unto us a, a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Man, I'm telling you what he said. He said, I'm all these things. See, the kingdom is in the king. See, I don't have to go to the Supreme Court now for counsel. I can go to the king. See, a democracy is different than a 
kingdom. All, everything that's in the kingdom is in the king. So you come to the kingdom. You come to him. You come to the king. He said, I am these things for you. Whew, God's introducing it. Look what he says. Of the increase of his what? He said, I'm going to come, and this kingdom's not leaving. I'll, I'm going to show you this next week about why he sent the Holy Spirit. Because his kingdom is in the spirit. The kingdom of God is righteous, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is, is in. He, he said, I'm going to come, I'm going to leave my kingdom here. And the kingdom is going to what? Increase. What's it say? Put it back here again, Marianne. It says the increase. The increase of his government. Maybe we stop believing what CNN and what, and, what, and what Fox News says all the time, we may be better off in our viewpoint of seeing God's kingdom. Oh, that's good. Amen. There's a lot of good going on in the world, and we're, not, we're oblivious to it, because why? They have an agenda to try to skew your view. Yes. Come on. Remember now, God's kingdom operates differently. Well, don't get mad at me and throw apples or tomatoes at me. I'm just telling you the truth. I've got the scripture to back me up on it. Jesus doesn't wear an R and Jesus does not wear a D. Amen. Well, praise God. You guys get upset when I start talking about this stuff. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. It's God's big idea. It's not my idea. If God left it up to us, we listen, it's happened for years. We do war. That's our ideas. It's, it's, it, we, you leave the king, a kingdom up to us, we step on somebody else to get to the top. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. If you leave it up to us, we'll bless those that bless us. Are you seeing this? I'm talking about God's big idea today. It says the increase of his government. There shall be what? <laughs> Jesus brought the kingdom. It's here. It's never left. Well, well, well. I need an instrument or something up here. Mm. Of the increase of his government and what? His peace. There will be no end. Upon the throne of David and up over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment or righteousness and justice. You know what Jesus come to do? He come to put us back to right in the kingdom and come to give my rights back to me. See, when this is good, I got the cold chills. Listen now, when the enemy came, listen, he stole our rights. See, it, see what happened in the garden was Adam went from a, from, from, from a kingdom to a democracy. He declared his independence. And when you declare your independence from a kingdom, the king leaves and there's no longer operation underneath the, the kingdom principles. See, that's what happened in the garden. We, we went from a kingdom to a democracy. A, a nation for the people and... I'm not against democracy. I, I, I mean, it's the best we got. And I'm thankful for it. But I'm just saying... God operates by a kingdom, not a democracy. And Jesus is not a six foot two, blonde haired, blue eyed person. Come on now. Well, praise God. Man, I, you ought to be here right here sometimes. No, 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 I'm saying this is, is, is that. He said, of the increase of his government, it, it's coming. And he said, I'm, bringing, I'm coming to bring and setting you back to right in this, in this kingdom. And also, I'm here to give you your rights. You have a right to healing. Come on. You have a right to deliverance. You have a right. There's kingdom rights inside the kingdom. And Jesus came to give me my rights back. 
Come on, somebody. All authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always. Go and teach them what I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He brought his kingdom. It's God's big idea. What's God's big idea? The kingdom of God. And it has, this has to become the way we start thinking about everything about our life. That's what I told you. Listen, this is, this is the key. This is the key. When we stop doing stuff for God, it's because we've lost the perspective of the kingdom. We, we start coming underneath our independence instead of his, his government. I begin to make my own excuses. And see, excuses are just misplaced priorities. See, I remember Pastor Jim always telling me that. He said, you know what, there's excuses and there's reasons. And I'm going to tell you something. I hear a lot of excuses, but not a lot of reasons. Come on, somebody. You can make an excuse. Listen, but all an excuse is is a misplaced priority. All the thing you're doing now is showing that, you know what, your priorities are out of bounds. That's good, Pastor. That's good. Amen. I'm talking about the kingdom. I'm talking about God's t- Jesus didn't bring a religion. Jesus didn't bring a religion. He brought a government. He, he brought a government. He, he didn't want to start a religion. See, that's man. Man wants to start religion. See, man, man wants rules and rela- rules and, 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 and that's what man does, is, 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 is religion. No, no, he didn't come to start a religion. He come to bring a kingdom. He come to bring a government. He come to bring a rule. He come to bring something different. That's why there's, there's, listen, when you get to heaven, when you and I get to heaven, there ain't going to be a, there's not a Baptist, Pentecostal, there's not a Methodist. No, that's not what, it, we're all a part of the kingdom. We're not each other's enemies. Why do we think that somebody has to be our enemy? Yes, God has places that, that you're called to, local church and establishments. And I believe this is the best place on planet earth. Well, I ought to believe that. You ought to believe that. This is your church. But I want to tell you something. I, I, I'm thankful for the people up here today that's meeting up the road. And I'm thankful for the Baptist church and, and the Methodist church in Buffalo, the church of God. And I'm thankful they're doing kingdom business, man. And we're all on the same team. But see, when we lose kingdom... We start building our own palaces and we start building our own things and our own empower, empires and not the kingdom. Come on, somebody. Kingdom of God. God, what is God's big idea? The kingdom. So God wants to introduce us to his big idea. He, God needed a different idea to be introduced to humanity. So he sent Jesus. And Jesus is The embodiment of the kingdom. You want to see what the kingdom of God is like? Look at Jesus. (laughs) Just just, just look to Jesus. Look what Jesus done. In Mark chapter 1, verse 14, look what Jesus done. I I love this. He said, now after John was put in prison. Now John, before, if you read it before, he was preaching the kingdom of God. Now when John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee and what did he do? He started preaching the good news of the what? It's good news. It's not bad news. It's what? It's good news. He come preaching the kingdom. He come preaching the kingdom. And then he says in verse 15, Now in saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is what? Is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. He comes bringing the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why Apostle Paul said, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? The renewing of the mind. Romans 12, 2. Renew. Prefix re, right? Prefix re, renew. Prefix re means to go back, to return back. New means fresh, novel. So when, the, when he was saying, he said, be con- Don't be conformed to this world world's philosophies and thinking uh, the ideas of this world but be transformed by the what Re- you got to go back to the original idea of what God wanting to do so it's this transformation of the mind of the good news of the kingdom of God that's why we can believe in healing come on that's why we 
can believe that people can be touched by the power of God. That's why we can believe that people can be delivered. That's why we can believe. It's in the kingdom. What was Jesus doing? He was here bringing the kingdom. He was talking about the kingdom. Read it. Just read the Bible. Read the Gospels. And how many times he was talking about the kingdom of God? All the time. All the time. The future of our homes, our area, our church is actually in the past. Let me say this again. If we're going to reclaim, and we said 2019 was the year of what? Reclamation. And if we're going to reclaim something, it's actually, the answer is, the answer is found in the past. Where is it found at? Let, it, let, let us make man in our image and let them have dominion. Where is it, where's the answer found back? It's found there. That's God's original idea. That's his big idea is the kingdom of God. Stay with me now. Amen. If Jesus is teaching the kingdom of God at the beginning of his ministry, in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, after his resurrection, he said he spent 40 days, in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, he said he spent 40 days uh, talking to his disciples about things concerning the kingdom of God. If he was doing this at the beginning of his ministry, he was doing it during the whole time of his ministry, and all of a sudden he was also doing it after his resurrection, talking about the kingdom, it's probably behoove all of us to understand what the kingdom of God is about. What is it about? God's big idea. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy what? Kingdom come, thy will, philosophy, idea, be done on earth as where? Stay with me. A kingdom's glory is found in its territories. The way that a kingdom expands is by colonization. Colonization is where where the kingdom would go and begin to encompass and take on territory to make that area look just like the kingdom from which uh, uh, that originally uh, came from. So if 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 Rome would would go and want to take they they the kingdom they would colonize it they would send citizens into that area a governor would go to that area Why do you think the Holy Spirit came He's the governor I'll show you that next week And the job of the kingdom And its glory is found in its territory. The glory of a kingdom is found in its territories it possesses. How do you think Satan's going to lose his glory? By the kingdom taking territory. By taking more territory. How is it going to happen? It comes through, it comes through coaches and, and doctors and lawyers and nurses and, and, and school teachers and, 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 and clerical workers and stay-at-home mommies and, 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 and people that have gone through this and people that have gone through that. The kingdom of God is increasing. The leaven, the Bible says the kingdom of God is just like leaven and leaven is placed inside of dough and it begins to infiltrate the whole thing to where it begins to to begin to permeate the whole thing. The whole thing becomes yeast. The yeast don't become dough, but the dough becomes... Oh, you didn't get that? I said the the yeast doesn't become dough. The dough becomes... And we're worried about getting out of here. That's been the concept of the church for the last 200 years. Well, let's get me out of here. 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 When God's trying to get in and start to leaven the world with his kingdom. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> nah, 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 don't that. Uh, I'll throw that thing. Chuck it back to the back. Hit somebody in the head. And next thing you know, we'll be in a lawsuit. So that, listen now. So, so the God's idea for the earth is to be a reflection of heaven. To dunk dominion, to dominate earth with the kingdom of heaven, the culture of heaven. Colonization, what is it? 
It's the extension of the kingdom, its government, its values, its morals, its culture to a foreign territory. That's what colonization is. See, we don't understand this because we're, we're raised up in a democracy. And democracies are different than kingdoms. The, listen, our president doesn't have power, doesn't, have, doesn't, have, doesn't own it all. You realize it, right? I mean, I mean, listen, democracy is set up to where it has a checks and what? Yeah, because why? We can't even trust our own selves. That's not that way in the kingdom. Because see, listen, our king, he's not a president. He's a king. And a king owns it all. Amen. I don't have to go through a bunch of rigmarole and this red tape to that red tape to get to God. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that I may find mercy and find grace to help in my time of need. I don't need an intercessor. I don't need somebody to represent me. I can go there because I'm a child of the king. I'm a part of the kingdom. I'm a citizen in the kingdom of God. And I can go before him saying, Father, thank you. He's a king. I said he's the king. So Jesus introduces us to the kingdom. Listen to this. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, or the word the kingdom is mentioned over 140 times in the New Testament. 97 times Jesus talks about it in the Gospels. The philosophy of God, his kingdom, his governing, and the way that he thinks. So what's a kingdom? Let's answer this question. What's a kingdom? A kingdom is a culture that's influenced and impacted by the government and principles established by the king over a territory. I, I, you don't have to write that down, but I just want you to know what it is. A, a kingdom, the general term kingdom, means a culture that's influenced and impacted by the government and principles established by the king over a territory. I think this is interesting because Rome wasn't a democracy. Rome's, well, Rome was a kingdom. And the apostle Paul said like this in Galatians 4.4. 4. He said, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, born of the law, right? In the fullness of time. The word fullness of time means the right time. Jesus came at the right time. So he comes talking about the kingdom, knowing that Rome is a kingdom. So every time he started talking about the kingdom, they would understand what he was talking about because why? They were under the Roman government. Again, it's not a, we, we, listen, we, we, we don't understand a lot of the kingdom principles because we're thinking with the Western mindset. Well, so I'm not a Bible scholar. Listen, there's plenty of stuff out there, man. You got study books, got study helps, you got study Bibles. Man, the Word of God is so, so available to people today. I mean, it's on your phones, it's on your iPads. It's a wonderful thing. So, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of Christ in the hearts of men. Then that rule and reign influences the natural world. Okay? It's God's culture influencing, impacting the world by its principles, its governments, its values, its laws. Do you know the kingdom has laws? A kingdom has to have laws. If it does, you know what? You know, you know where you find the law? You know where you find the laws of the kingdom? You know where you find the constitution of the kingdom of God? I call it the kingdom constitution, the Sermon on the Mount. You want to find out what the kingdom's like? Read Matthew chapter 6. Read, read Matthew chapter 7, 5, 6, and 7. Read those chapters. You'll see what the kingdom's about. You've heard it say, said, but I say. You heard it said, but I say. You heard it said, but I say. You heard it said. All through there. What's he doing? He's coming and introducing us again to God's philosophies, the way that he thinks, the way that he operates. Beware lest any man deceive you and cheat you through vain philosophies, through the traditions of men, and not according to the kingdom, not according to the Messiah, not according to Christ, the anointed king. You make sure that you watch yourself and don't get deceived and be cheated about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God's wanting to move into this world. Let's get started here real quick. I've got to finish this thing up. My goodness. All right. We won't get done. We'll just get one. We'll do one. Number one. All right. 
the basic ideas of the kingdom. Number one, basic ideas of the kingdom. The kingdom of God, the kingdom for us, and the kingdom in us. The kingdom of God is a present reality, and I'm invited to participate in it. In Luke chapter 16, verse 16, look what Jesus said. The law and the prophets were until John. (laughs) Since that time, the channel's changed. The channel changed. I changed the channel. I'm on a different frequency. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been what? And what? Everybody's what? Listen, I'm telling you what, there's something in you for good government. And when you start hearing the message of the kingdom, it propels you to start pressing into the things of God. Jesus said, all, I, all you got to do is start proclaiming the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, there's good news. And people want to be a part of good government. People want to be a part of the kingdom. People want to come underneath the government of God. Amen. It's good news. There's a kingdom for us. There's a kingdom for us. There's a kingdom that's here. Amen. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm not waiting for the kingdom of God to come. It's here now. See, it's here but not yet. It's here and we're moving into it. See, the kingdom first starts as a spiritual kingdom. It's it's like a treasure hidden in a field. It's like a woman that takes three measures of meal, right? It's like this, or takes takes leaven and hides it in three measures of meal. It's hidden right now. It's in us. And the kingdom is for us and it's also in us. We've been invited into this kingdom and we can participate in it. But but, but the thing is, is that this kingdom is working subversively. It's working under the radar. And it's going to come a time where there's going to be a natural kingdom where God will inhabit again. And the Bible says the new Jerusalem will come out of of, of heaven and it will, and the the earth, the earth will become God's tabernacle again. It it will be the the kingdom of God will be established naturally again in the earth. But until that time, it's still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get to live in a preview right now. Of what's going to be. Hmm. I've been rescued from the kingdom of darkness. And translated into the kingdom of God's son. Colossians 1.13. I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. See, the, the, the enemy has a kingdom also. Satan has a kingdom also. And there's a collision of kingdoms that's going on. But it's all a matter of ideologies. No, no, listen, you can get translated out of the kingdom of darkness, get translated in the kingdom of God's dear son, and be over here in this thing, and never know anything about your privileges. People sit in churches every single day and don't know what they have in Christ. Have no clue what belongs to them in Jesus. Not one thing about it. They believe everything that the preacher says. Now, thank you for believing me like that. I appreciate that. But please, go dig for yourself. (laughs) I study, I prepare, I do my due diligence. I promise you that. But I'm telling you what, listen, you got to have your own revelation. But see, listen, that's what it's an ideology. So you operate this way. Homeschooled, wrong home. Homeschooled and wrong home. Homeschooled and wrong home. Now I get over here. Now my thinking is still trying to be homeschooled and wrong home when I'm actually over here. So I've got to have a different idea. I've got to start learning about the things of the kingdom. <clears throat> You've been taken out of one kingdom. Man, if you're born again, you have Jesus, the Lord of your life. I'm telling you, man, you're already in the kingdom. It's here. It's now. It's not waiting to happen. It's in you. Luke 17, 21, that's what he says. He said, the kingdom of God is not here and there. Put it up there. Yeah, that's a good one. See here. So we you know where they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is where? It's in you. Where's the kingdom at? It's where? In me. You carry the kingdom. You carry the government of God. Matter of fact, listen. The kingdom of God rests upon Jesus' shoulders. 
He's the head. We're the body. The church is actually carrying the kingdom now. Tomorrow you're going to walk into work. Guess what you're going to carry in with you? What are we doing to let the kingdom out? Are we going to still be operating over here in this kingdom? Or we say, you know what? No, listen, that's not the way the kingdom of God responds. Boom. His government, his rule, his thoughts. Amen. I, I said the kingdom of God for us and the kingdom of God in us. We're citizens. Philippians 3.20 says we are citizens of heaven. Citizens. Every kingdom has citizens. Every, you can't have a kingdom without citizens. I live now from a different zip code, so this influences some things. It influences my loyalty, it influences my laws, and it influences my life. When I get in the kingdom, the kingdom of God needs to begin to operate and begin to affect the what I'm loyal to now. Come on. What am I going to be loyal to? My loyalties. My thoughts. My attitudes. The laws. There's only one law. You know there's only one law. in the. You know what the law is in the kingdom? You know, that's what the one law is. It's called the royal law of this kingdom operates. It's the kingdom of love. Kingdom of God. 1 John 4.8 says uh, God is love. So we can say this is the kingdom of love. So, you know, John Lennon wasn't far off. Matter of fact, he was on. All we need is, yeah, all I need is love. And it affects my lifestyle. Number two, idea, I'm going to go on here. Try to get this done. The kingdom through us. The kingdom through us. The kingdom is the rule and reign of Christ first in the hearts of man. God sets up his throne in your heart first. We wonder why we've, we have such a difficulty. Because we have made the kingdom about church. And about two hours of my time and my duty. It's not that. Mm -mm. No, it's his king. He sets on the throne in my heart. It's got to be through me. See, it'll never come through you until it first comes in you and you begin to establish him as your Lord. I'm not talking about Savior today. I'm talking about making Jesus the king of your life. There's one thing about being saved, but I'm telling you something. When you go and take the step farther and say, you know what, I'm going to make him my Lord. I'm going to, he is going to be the one that's governing my life. And I'm going to live my life that way. I'm going to live my life that way. We wonder why people are shooting stars. Wonder why they get excited about God. I'm going to tell you, and all of a sudden they fall off the radar in six or eight months or three years. Let me tell you why. Listen, you've lost the purpose of the kingdom. Jesus is no longer sitting on the throne of your heart. You'll, if you'll look, you'll be honest with yourself. I'm not trying to condemn. It's not condemn, condemnation. If you just take a good look at yourself, I'll guarantee your priorities are all whacked out. There is an expectation of the kingdom. John Calvin said this. Interesting. <laughs> it is the task of the church to make the invisible kingdom visible. What's our job? To make the invisible kingdom. What? Real quick. We see kingdom metaphors. We see kingdom metaphors. Kingdom metaphors. Light, leaven, seed, salt, a net. But what, what's the catch? What's the catch? What's the key? They're dependent on being used. They're dependent on being exposed. You can't have light unless it's exposed to what? Darkness. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't have leaven working unless it's exposed to heat. <laughs> you, you can't have a harvest unless you expose the seed to some dirt. You, you can't enjoy salt unless you got something to put it on. You can't have a net. What's the use to have a net if you never go fishing? What's the use to have a net if you never cast it into the water? 
I'm talking about you and I, everybody, young to old in this room. It doesn't matter how old you and you and I are. It doesn't matter. We're all in the kingdom, and the kingdom is in us, and the kingdom is trying to get through us. And the way that God is going to t- take over the world, that's his job. It's going to be through you and through me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That's what Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians 4.20. He said, he said, the kingdom of God is not just in word. It's also in demonstration. We can say all we want, but until we start demonstrating the kingdom. Come on, somebody. If the only time I'm praying for people in a line or praying for you is, is in a church line, I failed miserably. I failed miserably. If the only person at the time I talk about Jesus is when I'm right here in this pulpit, I have failed miserably. I'm not called. I, this is my calling. I get it. But you know what? I'm called to be a citizen in the kingdom. And I live where I live for a reason. We're here in this community for a reason. Come on. Ball teams need you. Come on. Co- co- the, the, the ball teams need coaches with the kingdom in them. Come on, somebody. We need civic workers with the kingdom in them. Am I making sense to you guys? I'm talking about the kingdom of God. <laughs> the first thing is the kingdom is what? It's, it's, help me out here. It's for us and in us. Second thing, the kingdom is where? Seeing the kingdom through us. The last thing is this. And we'll dig deeper here as we move on in the weeks to come. The kingdom must be sought by us. I want to go to that one last scripture. If you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to stop here. You say, what's the kingdom look like, pastor? It looks like Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt what? Among us. The word word is logos in the Greek. Logos. Guess what that word logos means? Idea. That's expressed. Jesus is God's big idea expressed. He brought his kingdom. He left his kingdom. He put it in us. That's why he sent the Holy Ghost. To get on the inside of you. That way the kingdom can ever increase forever and ever And ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. The kingdom's got to be sought. You can have God's big idea, but the Bible says you got to seek first the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6. Let's start in verse 24. I'm in Mark. I'll get there. Look what it says. No one can serve two masters. For he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them, are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about the clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not so much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the pagans seek. After all these things the Gentiles, the pagans, people that don't know God. That's what they seek. For your heavenly fathers know that you need all these things. But, conjunction, junction, what's your function? But seek first the kingdom of God and his 
way of doing things. His philosophy. The way that he does things. Seek first his kingdom and all these things. The clothing, the houses, all your needs will be met if you'll seek first the kingdom of God. He tells us here, what is God's priority? We make, we, 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 we make priorities, our food, our water, our protection, right? I mean, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? I mean, I mean, what we need. Pagans prioritize those things, he says. This is not the way the kingdom people should live. We think our job, our comfort, our stuff is the priority. It's not what Jesus said. He said our priority is the kingdom of God. Our priority is God's kingdom. And if I'll make it his kingdom, God will bless me more on accident than on purpose. If I'll just do what he tells me to do and seek him first. Listen, keep going and helping that widow. Keep serving in this church. Keep, keep dedicating your time. Don't just drop the ball. Be here when you're supposed to be here. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Seeking first the kingdom of God. Get yourself out out of bed on Sunday morning and say, you know what? I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. You know what? It's Wednesday night. Praise God. I'm going to push through and I'm going to get to the house of the Lord for an hour and 15 minutes. Praise God. I'm seeking first. You know what? I'm going to keep feeding the poor. I'm going to keep helping my community. I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. The problem with the church in America, we're no longer seeking the kingdom. We're seeking stuff. We're going to seek first the kingdom. I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm not letting the ball down. I ain't doing it. My question, I hope I, I, hope I stir up some of you up. Where have you dropped the ball? Used to serve in this church and do what you're doing. No longer serving. Why? 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 I'm asking the question, why? 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 Well, you know what? I'm really busy. That's an excuse. Because you'll make time to get to the ball field. I guarantee you on a Wednesday night. You'll drop everything else to go do what, you're supposed, what, what everybody else is doing. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to you to tweak your heart. That's all. There's no condemnation in this room. Not one. And if you feel condemned, you get out of that right now. You tweak your heart. I'm just trying. I hope I stir you up to love and to good works. That's what my call is to be in this church. Is to stir you up. Why? Why? Boy, I used to be a giver. I can remember when I was giving, no longer giving. Why? 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 Maybe we've made church about a routine. Maybe we've made our Christian life about going to church instead of the Christian life about the kingdom. What did Jesus say? Seek first. And if you seek first, Everything else will take care of itself. That's it. He promised us. He promised us. See, you just keep seeking first the kingdom. You don't get your eyes on what somebody else is doing out here, or what this recovery program is doing, or what that recovery program. No, no. You just keep seeking first the kingdom of God. I'll guarantee you that house gets taken care of. Because you're seeking first the kingdom. Right? Your business. Just keep seeking first the kingdom. Just keep seeking first. Just keep seeking. Right? With our families, our homes. Just keep seeking first the kingdom. Just keep seeking. And all these things should be added. Put them back up there. I'm done. Idea, big God's, God's big idea. Idea number one is the kingdom of God for us. Number two, the kingdom of God through us. The idea number three is the kingdom must be sought by us. That means you got to give some effort into it. Amen. What are you seeking first? What's dictating your lens? Seek first the kingdom. Well, praise God. Amen. Give the Lord a good handful of praise today. Let's pray. Father, thank you. For this Sunday morning, the opportunity we have to be here. I'm thankful for a people that love you.